Hi everybody, I'm Ali Graham. I'm Elliot Wong. I'm Megan Caffeine. I'm Patrick Brown. And, and we're, we're Team IBM, IBM PC. PC. Our project for 18545 is to develop an implementation of the original IBM PC, the IBM 5150, on FPGA. We intend for our implementation to be as faithful as possible to the original IBM 5150, including hardware that is analogous to the original's hardware. The IBM 5150 isn't commonly thought of as a video gaming machine. It was much more commonly used as a business computer. However, there were a large number of games written for or ported to the IBM PC. The IBM PC has all the attributes we commonly associate with video game machines, including video, sound, and user input. Therefore, we consider the IBM PC to be a video game machine and a valid project for this class. The reason for choosing the IBM PC instead of another machine from the 1980s, was its place in computer history. The IBM PC was not the first personal computer. There were other personal computers that predated it, including the Altair 8800, Commodore PET, and Apple II. However, the IBM PC was revolutionary because it set a standard, known as IBM PC compatible, for personal computers that still exists to this day. IBM's entry into the personal computer market is considered a watershed event in computer history. This is the moment in which personal computing became a part of mainstream life. Yes, there were many successful, IB successful personal computers before it, but IBM had something that no other manufacturer had, the IBM brand. IBM was the market leader in the computing industry at the time, and one of, was one of the most respected and innovative companies in the United States. IBM's entry into the market sent a clear signal across the world. Personal computing is the way of the future. IBM's computer would be massively successful and help IBM keep its place as the market leader. However, it wasn't only the IBM name that made the IBM PC a standard for computing. The IBM PC became a standard because it was easy for other manufacturers to duplicate. Historically, IBM made computers all on its own, hardware and software. However, IBM wanted to move the IBM PC to market as soon as possible. IBM's solution was to look outside the company for products they could buy off the shelf. They bought most of their integrated circuits, including the 88 8088 CPU from Intel, the disk drives and monitor were imported from Japan. For an operating system, they turned to two companies, the market leader for software, Digital Research, and a small company out of Albuquerque, Microsoft. Digital Research was reluctant to do business with IBM, but Microsoft, eager for sales, agreed to bundle DOS with every IBM PC in exchange for royalties. The only thing on the PC that was IBM owned was the BIOS chip. IBM's reliance on outside vendors made it easy for other manufacturers to clone its PC. All an outside company needed to do was to buy components from the same vendors and produce their own BIOS chip. Companies such as Compaq became highly successful by selling computers that were 100% IBM PC compatible. This meant that software and hardware developed for the IBM PC would also work on their machines. This turned IBM PC compatible into an industry standard. With the establishment of an industry standard, the personal computer market grew exponentially. In addition, it popularized the processors made by Intel and the software written by Microsoft. The IBM PC left an indelible mark on the industry by popularizing the personal computer. We intend to develop an implementation of an IBM 5150 on an FPGA that is as close to the original as possible. We will be doing the opposite of what many companies did in the development of their IBM PC compatibles. Instead of making a BIOS ourselves and using existing components, we will be using the IBM BIOS and making the components ourselves. There, are, there already exists a Verilog implementation of the Intel 8086 processor, the, the Z processor, from open cores. We will need to convert the Intel 8086 
into an Intel 8088 and verify that it operates correctly. The group who developed the Z processor also developed additional hardware that mimics the IBM PC's chipset. However, it is incomplete with some parts that do not faithfully simulate the original IBM PC. We will need to fill in the gaps in hardware that this group has not completed, included, including DMA control, BIOS, video, and UART. Our main objective will be the development of a fully functional IBM 5150 on an FPGA. The Z processor already gives us some of this functionality, which means that we may be able to chase some additional goals. We have set forward two reach objectives. The first is an emulation of a hard drive, which is a feature on the IBM PC XT IBM 5160. This eliminates the need to boot from a simulated floppy disk. The second is a math, is a math co coprocessor, the Intel 8087, which includes floating point operations. In terms of hardware, we have examined the various options available to us, and we think that the Vertex 5 LX best suits our need. It offers plenty of chip space for us to simulate our memory and logic. It also has a DVI VGA output port for video, and PS2 ports for the keyboard and mouse. To aid us in our quest, we have obtained several hardware guides. These include hardware guides from IBM and programming guides for the Intel 8088 and 8080, uh, 8086 processors. These should help us develop a Verilog description that faithfully replicates the IBM PC's motherboard and the Intel 88. We have also uncovered binary files for the original IBM PC BIOS. If these do not work, there are other BIOSes that are available for us to use, including an existing BIOS for the Z processor. We hope that this presentation gives you a good idea of what we would like to accomplish for our IBM PC partner. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to come to us to talk to us or email us.